In this video, we will troubleshoot systemd error on Linux distribution running inside WSL2. So first, let's see what is the error. This is my Kali Linux distribution, which I am running inside WSL2 on my Windows 11 laptop. And if you are interested in a similar kind of setup, you can check my video on WSL2. I will provide the link in description box. Now let's see the error. So if I want to reboot my system, so let me type the command sudo and reboot. So here I'm getting this frustrating error. It says system has not been booted with systemd as init system process ID one can't operate. So this is the error I'm getting continuously and this is so frustrating because I'm unable to reboot my system. And another command we will see, let's say I want to see the static host name of my Ubuntu system. So I will type host name CTL and see the same error I'm getting. It says system has not been booted with systemd as init system process ID one. So first let's understand what is this error and then we will troubleshoot this error. This is the official website for WSL and here it mentions systemd support is now available in WSL. So I will provide the link in description box so that you can visit this uh, website, you can read the documentation and you can know more about systemd if you are not familiar with systemd. So uh, first let's quickly understand what is systemd. So systemd is a suite of basic building blocks for a Linux system. Okay, It provides a system and service manager that runs as PID1, that is process ID1 and starts the rest of the system. So system ID is the first system. Okay, So system ID will first boot and then it will have a process ID1 and then it will start all other programs. Okay, Now what happens is whenever you launch a Linux distribution on WSL2, system D will not by default be activated okay, or be installed. So first you need to enable system D on a Linux distribution inside WSL2. So if you scroll down this document, then here they mentioned how to set the flag in WSL for system D. Okay, so it says you need to edit the file wsl.conf. Okay, and then you need to put this line. So un under boot, you need to type systemd is equal to true. So that system D will be enabled whenever you boot up your Linux distribution on WSL. So let's check this practically. Okay, on our Kali Linux operating system, which is running inside WSL2. Now I'm back to my Kali Linux distribution, which is running on WSL2. So before we enable systemd and before we modify the wsl.conf file, let's see know few things to better understand systemd okay so the first thing we will run is htop okay now see so it lists the various process that is running on my system so you can see here there are few processes which are running as user root and there are two processes which are running as user 2 like you know I'm, I'm, I'm logged in as user 2 so it is running as user 2 now let's hit f5 so you see here so the first process is in it okay and it has the process id 1 and all other processes are part of this in it so these are all the child processes which is running inside slash init but as per the wsl you know uh, documentation so if you enable systemd or if systemd is enabled then systemd is will be the first process okay so systemd will have the process id 1 but here you can see slash init is having the process id 1 which means systemd is not configured on your system so systemd is not set as the default you know, process id 1 so now let's go and enable systemd so that we can get rid of those frustrating errors to enable systemd we need to modify the wsl.conf file and wsl.conf file is located under slash etc so first let's check whether that file exists or not so we'll type cat etc wsl.conf so it says no such file or directory so wsl.conf file is not exist on our system so we will create this file for that we will type sudo vi etc wsl.conf hit enter and then as per the documentation we will add those lines first we will type boot close the bracket come down and then we will type system t then is equal to true and then we will save this file So let's uh, read this file. So cat etc wsl.com. So it says boot under boot. Its system is true. Now we will exit our operating system. So we'll type exit. Okay. So now I'm back to my Windows PowerShell. So we'll type wsl l v. So you can see I am I'm running two Linux distribution. One is Ubuntu and one is Kali Linux. So now I will shut down my Kali Linux for that wsl t and then I will copy and paste. Hit enter. Okay. Now we will again check WSL hyphen L hyphen B. So Kali Linux is stopped. Now I will again 
reboot my Kali Linux. So for that, WSL hyphen D and then copy paste. Now inside our Kali Linux distribution, so let me clear the screen. And now we will check whether that error has been resolved or not. For that, I will type sudo host name ctl, hit enter. I will provide my sudo password. And see, the error has been removed. Now that frustrating error is no more exist. So I can see my static hostname. Next, we will type htop and see if system D has been assigned process ID 1 or not. So we will type htop. So there are a lot of processes running. So we will press F5 to see the tree structure. So now we can see slash init has been assigned as process ID 2. So it is no more running as process ID 1. So we said after we in, after we enable systemd, systemd will run as process ID 1. However, we can see sbin init slash sbin slash init is running as process ID 1. So let's find out what is sbin init and why it is running as process ID 1 instead of systemd. So we will come out of htop. For that, we will press F10 and then we will type ls hyphen ltr space sbin init. So here you can see actually sbin init is a link to systemd. So now after enabling systemd, systemd is running as process id 1. So next we will reboot our system and see whether it is getting rebooted or not or if we are getting that same error. So for that I will type sudo reboot and hit enter. Now see my system has been rebooted and now I am on my windows powershell. Okay, I am no more on my linux system. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to my channel. This will motivate me to create and bring more such useful content. Till then, keep learning, keep practicing, take care of yourself. Bye-bye.